Hey everyone, well, welcome back to the kitchen. And you'll have to excuse the kitten that's trying to be a poser. He's the one in the room, my clothes. So he's trying to be a poser and kind of just be here. So in the kitchen today, which we haven't done this in a very long time. Um, yeah, a very long time. So I just thought maybe today we would just toss together something very healthy. You'll have to excuse me. Um, I think I'm allergic to him and what he did. Um, <laughs> so we're going to take some ground Italian sausage. I'm preheating this skillet and I'm going to mince up or cut up some potatoes. And I have a variety of spices right over here on the counter. Now a lot of these spices, like I said, this will be also a variety of health talk while we're doing this. And I did wash my hands before starting everything. Um, now, I also pre-sprayed the pan. I do not use oil. I use a spray. Why? It cuts back on cholesterol and fat. Now, what am I really making? Well, I have my tortilla flour out for a reason. It is right over here. And the reason that I have that out is when I pre-cook here, what I'm going to do is make my tortilla dough and then bake in the oven. That is exactly what I'm going to do. And when I'm done cooking the meat and the potatoes, then I'm going to take my tortilla dough, stuff it like a nice meat pocket of meaty, meaty sauciness. Yum. And you'll see because like I found that I can make so much more stuff with the masa flour and enjoy enjoy the food so much more that I made tamale pie last week it was so fantabulous I'm telling you fantabulousness of tamale pie being able to just make it at home. Let me wash my hands real quick. The fantasticness of tamale pie. And you know, we don't want to cross contam. Um, so what I'm going to do next is take a little bit of liquid smoke. This is hickory. And if you know me, I always put a little hickory liquid smoke in with my meat. I have another full one in the cupboard. Grab a spoon over here. Because if you know me and my channel, previously from cooking, you also know that I add in garlic. I always have my garlic. Always. Can't get that open with wet hand. But I always have my garlic. Put in a good tablespoon and a half, a tablespoon and a half. I didn't use no teaspoon. This is a tablespoon and a half of garlic. Now I'll add in my sriracha after a while. Yes, sriracha. I love my spices. Gotta have my spices. Go ahead and move that around in there. I've been watching Cooking with Brenda. I don't know if you guys know that. She's hilarious. Oh my gosh. I have to leave a link to that. Cooking with Brenda. She's hilarious. Gotta love people like that. Hilarious people. She's an older person. But you gotta love people like they do these old 
style cooking. And she starts off her video, hi, I'm Brenda. And then she announces her husband's name. Okay, the next thing I'm adding in is the curry powder. I don't know how well you can see that because of the light being behind me. I'm adding in the curry. And uh, I always add the spices in with my meat first. That way it captures. And then my turmeric. Now this is great for joint health. And if you have fibroid myalgia like me, if you have fibroid myalgia, it really helps with your fibroid myalgia pain and fatigue. And that way you're not really dealing with it. Fresh cracked pepper. Okay. Fresh cracked. And why fresh cracked? Well, that is so good for your digestive. And so is the curry, the yellow curry and the turmeric. It's great for your digestive. And then add in a little bit of parsley. You probably think I'm running out of parsley. I actually have a bigger thing of parsley over here. So as soon as I run out of this one, I have another one. Uh, yeah. Oh, and the editing program that I'm using now, like, I feel like I really like it. I really, really like it. I really, really like it. Yeah. <laughs> Use that sound build thing. It's kind of funny. Um, I'm going to break a little bit of that meat down. Now, the skillet that I'm using for this is um, not cast iron over stainless steel. So, I don't really have to worry about scraping this pan. So, I'm going to put my spices away. I always clean in between. Clean in between, it makes everything better. You don't have to worry about it after a while. It makes your kitchen clean time a lot easier. Like, if you always have like a moment in between for cleaning, it makes things go quicker. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, ta-da. And, and it smells so nice in here. Just waiting for the kitten to make up its mind. Like, what are you doing? What What are you doing? I just filled your bowl. You're weird. You're weird. No, you can't have the food. <laughs> He's weird. And he can't have the food. He's always trying to get the food. He knows the food smells good. It smells yummy and you can't have it. You're a brat and you can't have it. So... It's time to get to these potatoes. So what I do is I actually cut that little potato in half. And then slice it. Like, How in the heck? Like, yeah. I don't know. I just have that crafty skill. I just have that crafty skill. Be able to balance that knife. I did not go to culinary school. You don't have to go to a culinary school, culinary school, to have to uh, be able to cook in the kitchen. Hang around with old people. That's culinary school. That's old culinary school because it's old school. <laughs> like before, there were cooking schools. People hung out with old people. Think about that. It's the truth, right? It is absolute truth. For cooking schools, people hung out with old people. That's how we learn how to cook. Hang out with old people. The old ways. Titten, what are you doing? You don't call him Titten, we call him Titten. His meow is broken. He's not a cat, he's a Titten. You guys saw that. He was trying to pose and everything. Weirdo. Weirdo. 
tries beating up on Hercules. Hercules finally got him. Wow! Well, you know, it's better than to mess with Hercs now. Hercules is the most lovable cat. As for Tit, not so much. <laughs> Sparrow. I think he thinks he's half human. We used to share coffee with him, but not anymore. Coffee used to calm him down. He looks like a kid on Ritalin. He used to call it Tet and Ritalin. As a joke. Okay, almost done putting enough of these in there. <sighs> like after, after I'm done with these today, then um, then like I think. Maybe the next video that I do will probably be like, I don't know, a painting video before I do a sewing video because I have to do a fabric run and a um, run for threads. Maybe that'll be like a haul video, right? We'll have to figure that one out. So, um... Ooh, that looks yummy. I have to bring you guys over here to it. it. Looks yummy. Or show it to you guys before it actually goes into there. But it looks yummy. Making the little meat pieces will be nice. Um, I'll just put the knife in the sink. Now, oh, it says I have low storage. It always says I have low storage. I don't think it knows. I got rid of a lot of videos, so I shouldn't have it having a low storage. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so the next thing that we do with this, since I did rinse the spoon now, um, let's take some of this butter. And I don't really take a lot of butter. And, and if, like I said, if you know my channel, you know I only use unsalted butter. I am not a salty person. No, I am not. I am not a salty person. <laughs> I like butter for some things, but I'm just not a salty person. No, I'm not. Put that in there. Put that up. Smells so divine, I'm telling you. Okay. Because we got some of that melted in there. And this is before I add the sriracha and this tomato paste. Um, I'm actually going to add some balsamic vinegar. My fat burner into this. I'm going to go one two, three. This will be a slight hint of spice, but not overkill. Um, I never do overkill with this, just in case I happen to share a little bit of my food. Oh, just the, the loveliness of the, the smell. When that hits your nose, it's like, mmm. And it's healthy because it's fresh. So let's get that sriracha in there. First, let's rinse this. Get my 
to get that sriracha in there. Sometimes I just take the sriracha and just go like that and just one, two, and there we go. Just eye that sriracha and just let like that ball in there. You know what? That was two and three times a charm. Sometimes good things happen in threes, right? If you get people. Sometimes good things happen in threes for good people. And that still smells so divine, right? So, let's see. Where's the can opener? Oh, there it is. So you guys have to see the kitchen the way it is. I haven't like quite put everything away after cleaning um, on the daily. I like this can opener, but at the same time, part of it's kind of like hard to grasp because of my arthritis. I mean, I like it, but sometimes it gives me a problem. Sometimes it's hard to grip down. But when I do get it to go, it's it's fantastic. You know, like this, this can opener with the little thing at the top to this. That when you go, it locks. You guys hear that cooking, right? So here's your other little trick. Just push that through with your finger. Take that, and you barely got any there. And you take this, and you push it on through, and it basically scrapes out, that metal end on the other part, basically scrapes out what's there. And then, Booyah. Scrape it off. And you pretty much have a clean can to just put in your recycle. Yes, I said recycle. And then take that, put that down in there. I'm going to turn this down a little bit more to like simmer mode. And let this cook. I don't want this to burn. I want this to be nice. I want this to have a beautiful flavor to it. But I want it to be, you know, like thick but not too thick because I want it to have it, that flavor off of the other ingredients that are in here. And then what we will do is start with the masa flour in a moment. Smells wonderful. I feel like it needs a little bit more garlic, but this is what I usually do, just like kind of. There you go. That's another tablespoon, and it's an exact because, like, <laughs> it fell out as an exact measurement of a tablespoon. Oh. And I didn't have very much of that butter left, so I might. Put the rest of that in there just to kind of like the extra butter flavor and just put that with that and we'll put the trash aside because you know I kind of want this like rich flavor in my weekend food because I have a really good idea for a weekend uh, pastry that I'm going to use with the masa flour but I'm thinking, should I use my espresso powder with it? I'm thinking maybe if I fill up to it. If I fill up to it. My body has to fill up to it. Um, yeah, this, this smells, smells nice. Smells nice. Get a little bit more of my cooking water in there to kind of thin that out. You guys notice I never use milk in it because I'm lactose intolerant 
I have to use water on a lot of my dishes. A lot of my baking dishes get along with, get, you know, out there with the evaporated milk or the uh, other milk for that one. It's alright, I can use that. But, um, okay. Ooh, that's even better. Okay, there we go. That's what I was looking for. There we go. Here we go. Want a bite? Want a bite? No, Omar, I'm not trying to do that. Although I'm sure, Omar, you would take a bite. You and your girlfriend. You would enjoy this. Because I'd be like, bite. <laughs> no. No. Although I'm sure it's nice. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of like, Missing something? It's missing a little something. What's it missing? It's missing a little bit of sass. It's missing a little sass. What's it missing? Hmm. What's it missing? Maybe it needs a hint of paprika. Cayenne. I got some cayenne pepper. Needs a little cayenne. Add a little heat. Not my chili pepper. Not my chili powder. You guys did see that I washed that. Always wash. That I'm low. Okay. I'm get a little bite of that meat in there because I want to taste that meat. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And I have this on low. I might add in a little more of that water. Wash it again. Um might add in a little more of the cooking water to keep it simmering. If you don't want it to go dry, definitely don't want your food to go dry. I have another, like, we live in a part of Jersey where you can't drink the water. You know, like in some parts of Mexico where they say, don't drink the water. There's parts of California where you can't drink the water. Trust me, I lived in those parts. Like Chula Vista, El Cajon. There are parts of El Cajon and Chula Vista where you cannot drink the water, trust me. Live there. You cannot drink the water in some parts. It's that bad. So, um. <laughs> so, I will be back after I clean up and start the masa dough and then show you how to put it together and put it in the oven because I'm going to do an egg wash to put over it and then put it in and then we'll be done with that and then have some yum. Be right back. Okay everyone, well now I'm going to be making the tortilla dough. And I have my masa flour right here, which we all know. It, Acme's not a sponsor. That's what I just bought it from, you know. Um, and I always keep a second bag in the house because you never have enough tortilla flour ever. And you know what? I have to set the oven. Make sure there's nothing in there. Let's 
Shut that on 400. Now, it's a, you know, who knows game of what, you know, making something new. So I'm using the, the half cup to scoop this, so um, that's a half a cup. Turn you this way. And that way you can see the bowl that I'm using and the stove at the same time. Yay. Um, move the water over. Like I said, you know, we can't, we can't use the faucet water here in this part of Jersey because of the mineral deposits in it. Especially because we're in a rural area and we have to use well water. And uh, so, yeah, that was what, one and a half. So that's two. And I kind of feel sorry for like my future daughter-in-law. Like she's half Mexican, but she doesn't know how to make like any Mexican food. So it's like, I'm learning so I can teach her. Be the good mother-in-law. Learn all this stuff just so I can teach her. Um, now there's something that I did forget that I always want to put in this so it gets a little puffy. always like to put in a little bit of baking soda into it so it gets a little puffy in the oven because if I'm doing that in the oven that's what I want normally I would do the teaspoon but if I'm eyeing it down just a little bit because see like there's a teaspoon in there I'm good at eyeing that. It's weird, like some of us are really good at eyeing those measurements. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's like we have old people reincarnated in us. I don't know. And old people. I'm like half an old person. I'm reincarnated as an old person. There you go. It was like always in the kitchen cooking <laughs> for other people, right? And then, uh, I'm teaching all the old people stuff to you now. <laughs> we can laugh about that because it's probably true. Bringing me like the old people food that like is healthy as crap and they're like why don't you eat this because it's healthier for you and like we need to be reincarnated in somebody to be teaching you this so bam they selected only a few of us. <laughs> You never know, that could be some true stuff. <laughs> I'm just saying. I am just saying. You never know. We just really don't know. Like, science doesn't really know stuff, and you never know the stuff that they actually tell you is it true. We don't know. Is the planet round? No, it's actually egg shaped. Did you really know that? The planet is actually shaped like an egg. It's not really round. So the Earth is actually not a spherical object. It's actually shaped like an egg. <laughs> so, I don't know guys. water in there. Get this dough going. I know how I want the consistency of my dough because I don't want this dry on the bottom and that is one thing that I learned working with the moss of flour is how you want to work your dough and I think a lot of it has to do with climate. In fact I know it does. A lot of it has to do with your climate. Like 
if you're in a higher climate or a lower climate, you know, it's your altitude. You know what? That's like um, Colorado. They have this high altitude donut, right? It's a specific donut that's made in a very high altitude. And I was told about this donut. Like if you ever go to like a specific area of Colorado that that has that high altitude donut, let me know. I've never been there. My friend Rocco from Roaming with Rocco, he's been there. Um, no, I've heard about the high altitude donut. Would love to go there sometime, but I don't have the money. Would just love to go check that out. But hey, maybe someday. Go visit my friend Robbie. Go visit. Let's go visit. You know? It's a shame Robbie was like bullied off of YouTube. Really is. It's a shame. He's good people. He is. He's good people. Okay, so I have my Masa dough all ready to go. It's the consistency that I want. I'll show you. It is the consistency that I want. Um, so let me get my hands rinsed because I actually want my hands wet for what I need to do. And um, we will be right back with me filling everything because I have to get out the cookie sheet and put the foil on it and spray it down and get out the egg to do the uh, egg wash. And then we will do part three and then be done. And it'll be great. All right, be right back. Anyway, so we're back for getting all these lovely little meat pockets put together. And I thought it was recording, but I have two meat pockets over here. It should have been recording. Um, so let me get these little meat pockets going and then we'll be like back with a full sheet of meat pockets and uh, put that in the oven, pull it out and we'll have them all done. See you soon. Okay, well, our lovely meat pockets of love are ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to say that these need to be in there for at least 25 minutes on 400, but I'll check them just in case they need to be in there longer. So we'll be back with that. So hey everyone, they are just about done. They have a few moments left of yummy meat.